Afternoon, you know when you're at school, right? Then one of your mates gets in a fight and you're like, it's not really my battle, but he's one of my mates, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get involved anyway. Well, it's not quite as pathetic as that, but um, Lee, the Mac Master, who I've done my EV versus diesel challenges with, um, Electric Classic Cars, company based in Wales, have done a video debunk. Why doesn't anybody ever debunk me? It's not fair. Everybody hates the way Lee does these challenges. No one ever, no one ever comes at me and says, you stopped at the wrong petrol station, you filled up for too long, you put slightly too much fuel in, because I have done that before, put slightly too much fuel in. I have stopped at the wrong petrol stations. Um, no, no one ever debunks my diesel videos. They just want to have a go at Lee and his Porsche Taycan. Um, basically, what's being said here is, we faked it. Lee is deliberately manipulating the results uh, to make sure that the EV loses. He's doing it for clickbait. He does it for views. And there's a few different... <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to go with this video, so stick with it because it could go anywhere. And if there's a massive storm or the apocalypse, you'll see it out of this extremely muddy window because I'm not cleaning my X5. One video already went up this morning, which was a road trip yesterday. And there's a video going out tonight, which is me and Lee in the X5 doing a cool wall, a Top Gear cool wall. It's quite a chilled out video and it, it works quite well. Um, and I'm happy to do a cool wall with other people as well. You know, Lee isn't, I'm not exclusive with Lee. I'll do other collaborations. Tony Goodman from EV Carnage and I, we just came up with the best idea ever on WhatsApp um, a minute ago. So, you know, I'm not, um, not in a relationship with any YouTubers. I'm quite happy to uh, sling my hook wherever it may land. Um, told you I didn't know where this video was gonna go. Right, basically, there's this video that's come out from Electric Classic Cars, Electric Car YouTuber Misinformation Busted. So a few people don't like the way Lee does his challenges. Uh, firstly, like neither of us are professional racing drivers, so I guess there's that. But some of these comments, um, well, initially are really, really mean. So. Everybody stop being mean to Lee. I know he makes very clickbait titles. I know he makes very clickbait thumbnails. And I know he hates on his Porsche. But some stuff's gotten really personal and it's gotten a bit out of hand. Today I've spoken to uh, Rich at Electric Classic Cars. We're actually what's happened at the minute. We had a long phone call this morning and I spoke to Lee. He's now on a plane. And in fact, do you want to hear, do you want to hear my last message that was sent to Lee? Uh, at what time was this? That was at quarter past two, so it was a little bit ago, and it said this. Yeah, good luck, hope your plane doesn't, hope the door doesn't blow out like that other one that was flying the other day. Yeah, so um, that was my last message to Lee. Lee's on a plane. Essentially, people don't like the way Lee is representing the electric car, and they all have a problem with the way Lee has done the journeys. As I've said, bit of a long intro. No one seems to have an issue with the diesel, so, if you think I at any point have misrepresented petrol or diesel car ownership, and if you think I did it wrong, ch 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 challenge, challenge me. Why can't you? Why can't you debunk me? Come on, let's have you. Someone be like Jeff. I reckon I could have done that trip faster and cheaper than you because you used the wrong car. You went to the wrong petrol stations. You drove at the wrong speed. You were sat in the wrong lane. Doesn't seem to happen on the diesel thing, does it? So no. Okay. No one seems to be disputing that the diesel was the better car in each case, but they are annoyed with the way it was done with the Taycan. So, Rich from Electric Classic Cars, who's um, he has a company in Wales that turns classic cars into electrical power. Now, there's a lot that I can say about that, but let's ignore all of that. We had a chat about it this morning. I'm gonna go down and see him. I'm excited to see what's going on there. They're toys for rich people. They have a maximum range of about 150 miles. So I'm not completely sure Rich should have got involved because he doesn't actually work in the real world of electric cars, which is what Lee operates in because Lee owns one and runs one as a daily car. As I said, and I've said this to Rich this morning and I said it again on WhatsApp and he was happy to admit, they're toys for rich people. They're, they're, he's not making real cars to replace actual real cars. An electrically converted classic car is a novelty for someone who's wealthy. Now, that is not sitting in the same frame as 
electric cars that are being, oh, I don't know, forced on people who are in, let's say, the mobility scheme. These two things are not the same. They're quite different. And, but I think that as well makes it quite easy for me to have a good conversation with Rich because he kind of knows that he doesn't operate in that same zone. Um, I think there's some classic cars that I'm okay if you want to electrify, electrify your classic car. You've bought it. You do what you want with it. But I think there are, there's only a small amount of cars that actually suit electrification. And I think a good example is, let's take the Ferrari 400. Unedited video this, so Google it. Very, very pretty 1980s Ferrari, 70s Ferrari, I think. Um, came with a notoriously complex and expensive to maintain V12 engine. So you could say a V12 engine is a thing of wonder, but you could also say, there was a moment in time some years ago where you could not give away a Ferrari 400 because nobody wanted to deal with the engine and it wasn't your typical valuable Ferrari. It was a kind of square one with four seats and that, that suits me because I like oddball cars, as you know, and you'll learn more about my love of oddball cars on tonight's Cool War. I always thought the Ferrari 400 was a good candidate for electrification. And Richard just sent me a picture of another one um, which is a classic Mercedes-Benz SL, but not the one you're thinking of, and not the one before that, but the one before that. It was known as the 190 SL. It had a four-cylinder engine, and if ever you've driven one, they're really, like, delicate to set up. They've got to be correct, and it drives a little bit like a tractor, but absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous-looking car. So if you've got a car that is gorgeous but flawed because of the engine that's in it maybe that's a good candidate for electrification you had a nice sunset far too early in the day but we are in britain as everybody keeps pointing out to me when i moan about the weather so seven minute introduction some of these comments basically everybody's saying that lee is doing the wrong thing when he does these challenges he's charging at the wrong places he's not charging up to the correct amount of power and then he's deliberately going slow well i don't know about all that because a lot of people seem to have a problem with Lee's video where he drove from St. David's back to Leeds. Now, that wasn't the challenge, that was the day after. He was going home. It was just before Christmas, and he had to pick up some stuff from his house in Mansfield and then go to Leeds where he was spending Christmas. So you can't pick at him for choosing that route. That's what he had to do on that day. Like, you can't say, oh, you, you went to the wrong... What should he have done? Spent Christmas with some other family members that were at a more convenient location? You can't really debunk that. But a lot of the comments are quite amusing. I wasn't really going to look at any of the comments, but Rich is basically saying, I could do it better. And from my point of view, I was on the comments last night until quite late, and there's a part of me that thought, right, here you go, um... These Pioneer videos might have been relevant a couple of years ago, but their day is over. Electric car drivers are no longer intrepid adventurers. I have a bog-standard, long-range Model Y Tesla. I've done 43,000 miles in 22. I don't care. I do not care. It's a company car. It was a tax dodge, and you don't pay VAT on the electricity, so you cannot compare them like for like, because the government is incentivizing you to get into electric. You can't compare them like for like on costs until the VAT is levied at the exact same rate on the electricity that you put in relative to the diesel that we put in. You cannot compare the two. Um, the other thing is, this is like, oh, Jeff's, Jeff pedals conspiracy theories. No, Jeff can see where things are going. Now, I had a conversation with Richard about him doing the trip and possibly me doing the trip. It doesn't involve me. In many ways, there's nothing to do with me. Because as I said at the start of this long and quite, you know, ranty video. Hey, we're getting back to the ranty videos. This is what people like. And I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, as I said at the start, it don't involve me. No one has a problem with the way the diesels have been presented in the challenge. And I've changed cars three times. And no one's had an issue with that. Uh, I haven't got any of the, you know, the real petrol heady sort of people being like, Oh, we, we could do it faster. They're all, they've all got problems with Lee. But when I spoke to Rich earlier on, I said to him, 
what do you want to do? He wants to get a tyre can and have me start at the start point in a diesel car and then him show that the tyre can can do it better than Lee did it. You don't need me for that. Just go and film it. It's fine. Well, the light's going to go really weird now, isn't it? Because I've chosen this crazy location. Um, so you don't need me for that. Same as the bloke that said that Lee had done it all wrong when he went up to John O'Groats. He did the John O'Groats trip all wrong and another YouTuber tried to prove that Lee had done it wrong and ended up proving the exact same thing. And it cost him more and took him longer than me in a diesel BMW that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace. So I'm not really that interested in doing the challenge again because I've done it. You know my numbers, you know how much it costs me and you also know that I did it in a broken and not very economical car. So let's say that Rich from the classic electrical car company goes up to the top of Wales drives to the bottom of Wales in a Porsche Taycan and beats my Mercedes on both time and cost well on that trip we put in a mandated half an hour stop and I used the wrong car because it wasn't very economical so what will that prove if that is the case I don't think it will prove anything because I could go and do it in a Renault Clio 1.5 DCI and not stop, get 78 miles to the gallon and do the whole thing on like 30 quid. So we can go back and forth on this all day long. Like I said, Rich from the classic electrical car place in Wales doesn't make real cars for real people. He makes toy cars for rich people. And when I spoke to him about this, I said, look, if, you, if you're gonna do this challenge, you have to start talking about 20 mile an hour speed limits. You have to start talking about the fact that you can't top up your electrical car with cash. You can't top up your electrical car unless you have a smartphone that's connected to the grid. And I was speaking to someone yesterday who works at an electric company who says, when we sign people up for an electric car tariff, the car does an initial connection with the company that then stays constantly live. So your electric company always knows where you are and how much charge you have. So. If you're going to do it, Rich, you've got to talk about the 20 mile an hour speed limit thing. And you need to talk about the, the sort of ongoing creep of, of cameras and technology and all of this stuff that I believe is very, very bad and is leading us down the road of 15 minute neighbourhoods and climate lockdown and climate carbon credits and all that sort of stuff. But, and this was interesting... Rich isn't really aware of any of that stuff, said to me that the 20 mile an hour speed limits have been pretty good in the village that he lives in, and the cameras are ANPR cameras to catch baddies. So I think I need to do a little bit of um, education on my so-called conspiracy theories that I've been peddling. But again, I don't, like, how are people missing this? Low emission zones in London, low emission zones everywhere. Science doesn't make sense. None of it makes any sense. All seems to be about money. All seems to be about fraud. Um, and yet, somehow, people are, weird light. Um, somehow, people are going about their lives and not noticing any of it is happening. Um, and all these cameras that are going up everywhere are absolutely for pay by the mile. These cameras that are going up everywhere, right? They're not, they're not AMPR cameras to stop stolen cars and, and baddies and all that stuff. No chance, because the crime is going up. Look at the Land Rover Range Rover problem that we've got, right? You've got this massive issue with all these Range Rovers being stolen. And at no point has anyone thought, why don't we ask the government if we can use all these new cameras to track the baddies that are stealing the Range Rovers? It doesn't happen. That's not what the cameras are for. The cameras are to track you and me so they can charge us by the mile and keep us within our 15 minute city and ensure that we're not going over and above our allocated amount of carbon that we're allowed to use for that year because of the onset of everything that's happening. And if Rich was interested in looking at the 20 mile an hour speed limits in Wales and where they've come from and where like the route of pushing all of these 20 mile an hour things have come from, then he'd go down a whole new rabbit hole of, whoa, hold on a minute, not really sure I should be converting these electric things to these classic cars to electric, but fair play to Rich, he sort of lives in a little bubble in Wales and, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with living in a little bubble and not being aware of what's going on in the world, but don't be surprised when it comes and smacks you in the in face, because that's what, I'm not, I'm not going to smack him in the face. I'm not the bully that's going to jump in and try and defend Lee because he, he's made a bed for himself with all his clickbait titles and stuff. So that's okay. That's just Lee. That's the way he does it. Um, 
he has cool people beige trouser wearing trying triangles sandwich wearing doggers and I, I said to him maybe calm down and all that uh, but then he doubled down on it with a message earlier on so that, that's just late it's just the way he is but what I mean is like the slow creep of tyranny will start to smack people in the face but maybe it won't smack Richard in the face because all his clients are wealthy and maybe wealthy people can't see that all of this stuff is happening and maybe wealthy people don't realize that pay by the mile and creeping insurance costs and creeping car tax and creeping costs of fuel are all contributing to stop us from going places. Maybe wealthy people don't realize that. And in my experience working with previous clients and working with wealthy people, generally that is the case. They just pay for the stuff as it comes in and don't realize that things are getting worse. So, 15 minutes in, have I actually said anything yet? Uh, challenges with the Mac Master. Does the Mac Master cheat? No. I think he's just quite naturally a bit of a bimbler. Um, whereas with these challenges, I just get my head down and do what I've always done when I'm trying to get somewhere, which is just get there. Um, and I think Lee takes things at more of a sort of leisurely pace, really. Um, what is going on here? There's a man with a high-vis vest walking up to me. And I'm curious as to what is about to go on here. Could be anything. I'm going to leave the camera rolling just to see what happens. I'm being approached by a man in a high-vis vest. Hiya. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, just making a little video. Whoa. A video? Yeah. How do you mind me? Video's in my car. Uh, how do you came here? I just drove. From the here? No, from down the bottom. From the bottom? From the front gate? Yeah. I haven't seen you. Because it's not allowed to come here, man. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Because this place is closed, and that. Yeah. I know I'm only sitting here in my car. Yeah, well, it's dim. It's private. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's just a car park, isn't it? No, it's not a car park. It's a hotel. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. It's is the hotel closed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Okay, so on your way? Yeah, is there no one in the hotel then? No, no yeah, way. right. Okay. All right, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. I bet I know who's in that hotel. And I bet it's connected to everything that I was, uh... yeah, that's quite interesting, isn't it? So apparently I'm in a hotel car park and the hotel is closed. They're not going anywhere either. <laughs> oh, I've lost my flow now. Um, but basically, there's some strange things going on in the world and um, does Lee cheat on the challenges? No, not really. Um, he's just a bit of a bimbler and I like to get my head down, well, get my toe down and just keep going and get it done. That's bizarre. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna as I drive out, I'm gonna see if this actually is an empty hotel, because I suspect it's not. I might be wrong. This might be perfectly innocent, and I might be trespassing. But all I'm doing is sitting in my car in a car park. Um, yeah, so Lee's a bit of a bimbler. I like to drive fast. Uh, I think we've proven everything that needs to be proven. I think to some degree, there's no way that a, an EV can actually beat a diesel on sort of cost and time on any of these things. So. What's next? Uh, I, I enjoy collaborating with Lee, so I'm going to keep doing keep doing stuff with him. Like I said, um, you know, we're not exclusive. Um, I'm going to do collaborations with other people as well. I'll hope to go down and see Rich, and he can explain to me why converting classic cars to electrification is a good idea, and perhaps I can explain to him why it's not. But then again, he's got a business to keep going as well, so maybe there's that. But I'm not really looking to get involved in anyone's battles. I quite enjoy making YouTube videos. Hopefully you enjoy watching them. Um, it's as simple as that, really, isn't it? It is as simple as that. Now, should we go find out if this is a migrant hotel? Um, don't go down that rabbit hole, because that one gets pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to go do a video with Funky Prepper soon as well, but he keeps cancelling on me. Right, thank you very much for watching this video. And if I don't make any more videos after this, then they got me.